Git stash is super useful when you have uncommitted changes that you're not quite ready to commit yet, but you quickly need to switch to a different branch or do a merge or anything else for which you need a clean working copy. You might already know that you can use Git stash to store all your uncommitted changes in temporary storage and then use git stash pop to get those changes back. But did you know that you can store multiple stashes at the same time? Let me stash my changes to the readme and index file again. Now I'll make an additional change to the package.json file and stash it once more. To see all the stashes that I created, I can use git stash list. Unfortunately, the naming of the stashes is not super helpful. This part here is the name of the stash entry with the latest stash always at index zero. And this part shows us the branch and commit hash that we were on when we created the stash. We can also add a custom message to our stash. Let me make another change, this time to the utils.js file. Now I'll use the git stash push command which is just a longer version of the git stash command. This lets us add a message, which is then shown when using git stash list. Our stashes are stored in a stack data structure. So when you run git stash pop, the last element you pushed onto the stack is removed and applied to your working copy. All right, let me stash that once more. Sometimes you want to apply a stash to your working copy, but without removing it from the stack. I sometimes use this when I'm trying multiple approaches to a problem, and I'm not quite sure yet which one to keep. You can use git stash apply for this. As you can see, the utils.js file is now modified again, but the stash for it is still kept on top of the stack, so I can retrieve it later again if needed. Okay, let me get rid of those changes again to get a clean working copy once more. You can also use git stash apply, or pop with a specific stash. For example, here I'm applying the stash at index one, which contains the changes to our package.json file. Now, finally, if you want to delete a stash, you can use git stash drop. You can use pop, apply, and drop either without an argument or with a specific stash. Sometimes I want to look inside a stash to see all lines that were changed in it. This is most easily done using a GUI client. I'm using source tree here, which is free, link in the description. But most Git clients I know have this feature. Here we can see all our stashes and clicking them lets us see all lines that were modified inside that stash. Sometimes I even copy and paste individual lines from a stash as needed. One more thing to be aware of is that you can get merge conflicts when popping a stash off the stack. This can happen when the state of your repo changed since you created the stash, for example because you switched branches or created a new commit in between. Don't worry, if that happens, Git will keep your stash on the stack even if you used git stash pop. It'll also try to apply the stash, putting your repo in a conflicting state. You can then just resolve the conflict as usual by removing the conflict markers from the file and then adding and committing the file. I have a full video on resolving conflicts on my channel, link in the description. By the way, if you like my style of teaching, there are still some open slots left for the live online Git workshop I have planned for later this year. There you can practice the things I teach in my videos with bite-sized examples and get immediate feedback and support when something isn't working. Please go check that out at philomatics.com slash Have a great day and thanks for watching Philomatics.